Today I've got a nice problem that is actually deeper than it might seem. So what do we want to do? We'd like to show for all n bigger than or equal to zero. So in other words, for all natural numbers, the 4n plus third derivative of one over x squared plus one evaluated at x equals one is equal to zero. And when I said earlier that this is really deeper than it looks, so it looks just like we're taking some derivatives here, the deepness is coming from the fact that in the background of our solution, we're really using something called the Laplace transform. And among other things, the Laplace transform is a really important part of a differential equations course. And I've got a full course on differential equations over at my second channel, Math Major. So there are 23 lecture videos, and accompanying every lecture video is an example video. And so I think that's a pretty good deal. So maybe go check out that channel if you haven't done that yet. Okay, so now that I've pitched that, let's get into this problem. So let's notice that we can look at the following integral. So I'm going to look at the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus xy times the sine of y dy. So let's notice this is a function of x. And you might say, well, why are we looking at this integral? And what does this have anything to do with this problem over here? Well, we'll see the relation once we like calculate this integral. There are a number of ways to calculate this integral. I'm going to do it using complex functions a bit. So I can rewrite this as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus xy times e to the iy dy. And that's, of course, using Euler's formula. Recall that Euler's formula says that e to the i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. So if we extract the imaginary part from this right-hand side, we get sine theta, meaning that the imaginary part of e to the i theta is in fact just sine theta. So that's exactly what we did here. We replaced this sine of y with the imaginary part of e to the i y. Okay, great. So now let's finish this calculation, or finish this bit of the calculation, I should say. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the imaginary part of our integral from 0 to infinity. Now we might as well write this as e to the i minus x times y dy. I think that's a pretty reasonable way to write that. Okay, but now we can take the antiderivative of that without much worry. This is going to be equal to the imaginary part of 1 over i minus x times e to the i minus x times y evaluated from y equals 0 to y approaching infinity. So recall that there's a limit built into this. Now notice that we might as well take x to be a positive real number, given that over here we're looking at when x is equal to 1, and that's in the positive real numbers, obviously. So that means as we let y approach infinity here, we have e to something where the real part is negative. So since the real part is negative, that means that this experiences something like exponential decay. So that means this thing into our function will trend off towards zero, leaving us with only the y equals zero portion. But let's notice the y equals zero portion will simply give us the number one. But it's attached to a minus sign because it's in the lower bound. So I can uh, exhibit that by changing the order of subtraction in that denominator. So really we've got the imaginary part of x minus i. But in order to calculate that, what we'll do is multiply by the conjugate. So let's multiply the denominator by x plus i. That means we also need to multiply the numerator by x plus i. That's going to leave us with the imaginary part of x plus i over x squared plus 1 squared. 
But now taking the imaginary part of that, we see that we get one over x squared plus one. So that denominator is real, the x is real, the only imaginary part is i, which is connected to the number one. So let's notice what we've done here. We have attached our function one over x squared plus one, which is the function in question here, to this integral up here. And now using this expression, this integral expression for our function will allow us to prove this result. So let's get to that. So we just wrote our 1 over x squared plus 1 with the following integral representation. And now we'll prove this result here, which is our goal, via induction. So notice our first step will be the case when n is equal to 0, so we're taking the third derivative. So let's do that. Let's say we're taking the third derivative of 1 over x squared plus 1. But since we're just taking the third derivative here, we could just kind of grind it out on this definition. But to get a flavor of what's going on, let's instead use this integral representation. Okay, so that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity and then the third derivative with respect to x of e to the minus xy times the sine of y dy. And here I've like done something that seems a little bit sketchy but isn't really as sketchy as it might seem, and that is I've brought this derivative inside of the integral. But now let's have this derivative act on our function e to the minus xy. That's the only thing with an x in it. So that's good. And that's going to give us the following. We'll have minus 1 to the third power. We get a minus 1 from each of these. And then next, we'll have the integral from 0 to infinity. We'll have a y cubed. We get a y from each of these because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. And then we'll have e to the minus xy times the sine of y dy. So something like that. Now, this thing's a little bit hard to work with as is, but if we use that same trick that we did before, we can ease our troubles. So in other words, I'm going to take this sine y and just as before, write it as the imaginary part of e to the i y. Great. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have minus 1 cubed and then the imaginary part of the integral from 0 up to infinity of, let's see, y cubed e to the i minus x times y dy. So just like kind of as before. Now I'm actually going to make this a little bit simpler by doing a substitution. So what's the substitution that I'll use? Well, this exponential could be made simpler than it is. So the substitution that'll help us out here will be t equals x minus i times y. So notice it's not exactly what's in the exponent right here. It's actually negative what's in the exponent. So let's point that out. So like I said, this is equal to minus t. And we really want to have like exponential decay there. We could like set it up the other way, but I think this makes the calculation a bit simpler. Okay, so let's note that this means that y is equal to 1 over x minus i times t, and dy is equal to the same coefficient dt, just by the linearity of the derivative. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have minus 1 cubed, then we'll have the imaginary part. Now we have the integral from 0 up to infinity. Notice when y is 0, t is also 0. And as y approaches infinity, the real part of t also approaches infinity. So there's a little bit of something sketchy going on there, but we don't actually need to worry about it. Everything works out in the end. Then we've got this y cubed dy. So that's going to give us a t cubed and then a 1 over x minus i cubed times another one from the dy. In the end, we'll have 1 over x minus i to the fourth power and then t cubed e to the minus t dt like that. 
And now we're actually essentially done with this calculation. We don't even have to finish working on the integral. And that's because if we do our very last step of evaluating this at x equals one, so maybe I'll write that down here as this squiggly arrow, evaluate this at x equals one, we'll have negative one cubed, we'll have the imaginary part of one over one minus i to the fourth power, and then the integral from zero to one of t cubed e to the minus t dt. But now let's notice that this integral is real valued. We don't even really need to calculate what it is, because since we're taking the imaginary part, all we need to know that it's real valued. And Furthermore, one over one minus i to the fourth power is also a real number. So, and that's because one minus i to the fourth power is a real number. I'll let you guys check that, but I think it ends up being something like the number four. So this is also a real number. So we're taking the imaginary part of a real number, but the imaginary part of a real number is zero. And so that's our base case. Let's take this from the extreme left hand side. We have this third derivative of x plus one squared evaluated at x equals one, if you will. And we have seen that that is equal to zero in the end, which is exactly where we wanted to end up. OK, so now that we've got this base case taken care of, let's do our induction step. So now that we've set up our induction, we're ready to finish it off. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, the 4k plus third derivative of our function 1 over x squared plus 1 evaluated at x equals 1 is zero. And then we want to look at the next case, which is a number of the form 4, time, four times something plus 3, but that'll be 4k plus 7. Notice that's 4 times the quantity k plus 1 plus 3. So that's of the same form. Okay, so let's start by rewriting this using this method over here, just as we did before. So this is going to be the 4k plus seventh derivative of our integral from 0 up to infinity of e to the minus xy sine of y dy. So we have something like that. Okay, cool. Now we can play the same game here. We'll get negative one to the four k plus seven, which is negative one. And then we'll have the integral from zero up to infinity of, let's see, it'll be y to the four k plus seven, and then e to the minus x y sine of y dy. Like I said, just, just like we did before. And now from here, we're gonna set up an integration by parts. And maybe just for the sake of argument, I'll call this function right here, f of x, y. So let's do that. So we've got this is f of x, y. Okay, now let's see what we get for this integration by parts. So I'll do it with this di method. So over here on the left, I'll write y to the 4k plus seven. And then here I'll write f of x, y. I'll take derivatives down this left-hand side and antiderivatives down this right-hand side. But I need some notation for antiderivatives, so maybe I'll subscript the antiderivatives. So this, since this is a function on its own, we'll call this just f0. And then the first antiderivative with respect to y will be f1 and so on and so forth. And these functions most definitely have antiderivatives with respect to y. And one important thing is that they'll all have this e to the xy in them. And thus, when evaluated in infinity, we'll get zero. And that's all the information we really need. OK, so let's get to it. So let's take this first derivative. That'll give us 4k plus 7 times y to the 4k plus 6. So the second derivative will give us another number, which we actually don't really care about, times y to the 4k plus 5. And then the third derivative will be another number times y to the 4k plus 4. And then finally, a uh, last number times y to the 4k plus 3. So something like that. And then let's take these antiderivatives. So we'll call this f sub 1 xy, f sub 2 xy, f sub 3, 
x, y, and finally the fourth antiderivative will be f sub 4 x, y. Okay, great. And now let's match these on the diagonal and then alter the sign. So we'll match here, we'll match here, we'll match here, we'll match here, and then we can match these straight across and end up with an integral in the end. And so that's like kind of a trickier part of these types of things. Okay, so now let's alternate the sign, plus, minus, plus, minus, and then this will give us a plus. So let's see what we have. We'll have y to the 4k plus 7 times f sub 1 of x, y. But let's recall that this f sub 1 of x, y has a factor of e to the minus x, y in it, just by the structure of f0. That means when we evaluate this from 0 to infinity, we'll get that this entire thing is 0. Here we're evaluating this e to the minus x, y at infinity, and that's going to die off because we've got exponential decay. And then here when we evaluate y at zero, the whole thing is going to be zero. And that means that this term right here from the integration by parts give us, gives us zero. Furthermore, this next portion will give us zero for the same reason. This portion will give us zero for the same reason. And then this portion right here will give us zero for the same reason leaving us only with this integral left over. So let's write that. So in the end, we've got a number, and that number comes from these repeated antiderivatives, and then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity of y to the 4k plus three times this f sub four of x, y, dy. And that doesn't actually seem very helpful, but the very last thing that you can check, and I'll maybe leave this as a homework exercise, is that these functions right here, this e to the minus x, y, sine y, form a loop when we take derivatives. So if we take the first derivative, we'll get something. If we take the second derivative, we get something else. The third derivative will give us something else. And the third derivative will give us a constant multiple of what we started with. So again, you can check that. So, but that means if derivatives give us a loop, then antiderivatives also give us a loop. So in other words, this f sub four of x, y is a constant multiple times e to the minus x, y sine of y. So we can combine these two constant multiples, this one that's this white box and this one that's this orange box, to give us, in the end, some new constant multiple times the integral from 0 to infinity of y to the 4k plus 3, and then e to the minus xy sine y dy. But let's notice that that's exactly a constant multiple times the 4k plus third derivative of our function right here by essentially this path in the first line here. So that means in the end, if we evaluate this at x equal 1, we get 0 by our induction hypothesis. And that's a good place to stop.